Hello everybody and welcome back. In the previous video, we were discussing how to prepare for your IFR cross country and the appropriate pre-flight actions. Now, with all of that information in place, in today's video, we're going to look at the sequence for building our nav log and flight plan. Now, we're going to do this in four phases. You can see those here. The departure phase, en route, arrival, and approach. Well, folks, welcome back to the Epic Flight Academy. This is our instrument rating course. My name is Mike Thompson, and I'm your host, and I'm so glad you're watching these videos. Please hit that subscribe button. But remember, to be successful, it won't be by these videos alone. Of course, by now you know there's three keys to your success, and the first one is to be in Epic's online instrument course. The second is to watch these videos. And thirdly, of course, review all of this with your CFII, your instrument flight instructor. So the reason why we take this four part approach to the planning sequence lies in the aim. In the aim, you ask? Well, yes, and here's why. With your flight instructor, I want you to take a look in the AIM at Chapter 5. And I want you to notice the sections in Chapter 5. In the AIM, Chapter 5, Section 1 is pre-flight planning. Now, <clears throat> this we just covered in the previous video. Section 2 is departure. Section 3 is en route. And Section 4 is arrival and approach. So, following the structure provided by the AIM with pre-flight and planning complete, let's continue with departure. Now, in our scenario, we're planning a flight from Daytona Beach to Key West. You can see that here. The first thing to check is to see if the departure airport has any non-standard takeoff minimums or obstacles. Now, on this slide, you can see that an airport may have just takeoff obstacle notes. Look at Daytona. Or it may have takeoff minimums and takeoff obstacle notes. Take a look at Defuniac Springs or it may have takeoff minimums, takeoff obstacle notes, and departure procedures. For example, Crystal River. Or the airport may not have any of these. So, what do we do next? Next, we'll check for SIDS. If no SID or ODP is in place, we can fly direct to the most practical en route fix. Now, the departure phase is complete when we connect with the en route structure. We connect to this portion of the flight in a variety of ways. If you're flying a SID, it will connect you to an en route fix or waypoint. Or if you're not on a SID, you may file to an en route fix or waypoint. Or you may be vectored onto an airway or to an en route fix or waypoint. I want you to discuss all these options with your CFII. In planning your en route phase, check the chart supplement to see if there are preferred routes between your departure and destination. Now, preferred routes are something like highways in the sky. You may enter and exit the route at any point. Preferred routes do not go between 
all airports. For example, on our Daytona to Key West flight, Let's just say, for example, we had departed from New Smyrna Beach Airport or the Ormond Beach Airport. In this case, we'd be departing just a few miles away from Daytona. Now, notice in the chart supplement on preferred routes, it does not list routes from New Smyrna or Ormond Beach to Key West. So what do I do? Well, take a look here. We, what we would do is depart from New Smyrna Beach or Ormond Beach and then join that preferred route structure from Daytona Beach. Now, it is important to remember that if you file for other than a preferred route, be ready and don't be surprised if you receive an actual clearance for the preferred route. I want you to review this with your CFII. Now, whatever route you plan for, be sure that you have the appropriate navigation equipment. For example, if you plan a route using both RNAV and Vector Airways, well, that's okay. Review the AIM Chapter 1, Section 2. But be sure that your VORs have met their required check within the past 30 days and that your GPS database is up to date and current. Now that you have successfully built the en route segment, we move into phase four of our planning, and that is arrival. Remember in the AIM chapter, chapter five, section one, pre-flight and planning. That was the previous video. Section two, departure. Section three, en route. And section four, arrival. So what's our first consideration with arrival? Well, are there stars? Now, you mean like stars on a night flight? Uh, oh, no, maybe you mean movie stars. You remember them from a previous video? Um, no. Are there any standard terminal arrival routes? So refer to that earlier video to look at stars in detail. Now, the majority of stars are for high performance or turbojet aircraft and may not apply to you if you are in a Cessna 172. Now, finally, take a look at what instrument approach procedures are available at this airport. Now, as you consider your arrival and your approach, I want you to discuss this with your CFII and consider the following five points. Number one, what are the forecast winds for your arrival airport? That will affect what approaches you plan for. And remember in an earlier video about circling, the runway that you want because of the current winds might not have an approach. Hey, this is where circling might come in handy. All right, number two, consider the navigation equipment you have on board and which uh, approaches your aircraft is actually equipped to fly. Number three, look at how your en route plan will connect to that airport and how you will get to an initial fix or an initial approach fix for the approach that you want. Now, this may be through a star, 
But again, with a small training aircraft, probably not. Now, consideration number four, and this is a key consideration. Be sure to include an initial fix or an initial approach fix in your flight plan. Why? This will make things much easier and flow much more smoothly should you have a communications failure en route. And consideration number five, always check the NOTAMs for the airport. Again, you did this as part of your pre-flight planning in the previous video. Now, at this point, we want to make a final selection of our altitude. During our pre-flight planning in the previous video, we had a pretty good idea of the altitude that we were going to use, but now we need to make our final altitude decisions. So, to do this, let's consider, number one, our aircraft ceiling, okay? Number two, the route floors, such as MEAs, uh, etc. Number three, our IFR cruising altitudes. And in addition, let's think about these things. Icing, oxygen requirements, and the best performance of our aircraft at particular altitudes. Now, discuss these considerations with your CFII and make your final altitude selections. At this point, we need to ensure that we have planned for an alternate airport if one is needed or required. Now, I want you to remove any confusion about alternate airport planning by reviewing the EPIC instrument course video on alternates. And lastly, before you depart, be sure to file an IFR flight plan. Now, I want you to review the details of this with your CFII. Having completed the IFR pre-flight actions as covered in the previous video, and having completed the planning sequence that we just reviewed in this video, you have all the information that you need to complete and file your IFR flight plan. So, have a fun and safe flight. Have fun in the Keys. Well, that about wraps up IFR cross-country planning sequence. And this wraps up the Epic Flight Academy instrument rating course. Folks, it has been a pleasure. I'll see you in the skies.